Hey, it's James, Father's Rights and Resources, hashtag how I got custody. Um, you have to not settle for any BS. So, you got to not settle for an attorney telling you, well, you can't do this, you can't do that. You can't get more than every other weekend. Well, go in there and try. I mean, that's one of the most adolescent things I've ever seen in my life where an attorney said, well, you probably won't get that, so let's not try. Isn't that why people become attorneys anyway, to fight an injustice and fight the status quo? You don't, I, I get a lot of people when I talk to them, I said, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And they're like, I don't know as much as you do, James. I'm talking about stuff that I did when I was totally lost. I questioned the bull crap. Why, why did Goldberg and Jones of Seattle tell me I'll get every other weekend when I told them I work at night and I can have my daughter during the day when the mother's at work? They told me I can't even have my kid then. They said, you'll probably still get every other weekend. They're so brainwashed. You ever seen the picture of the elephant that's tied to a chair or tied by a rope um, to a post? You know, elephants at the circus, they're tied to a chain. They try and break free. They try and break free. They try and break free to the point where they could just put something around their ankle. I don't know if it's real or it's a theory, but it makes a great point. They could just put a rope around their ankle and they don't even try to escape because they're so used to trying and failing that they don't do anything. Or I saw Steve Harvey talk about, you know, if you put a flea in a jar, fleas can jump like six feet in the air or something like that. But if you put a flea in a jar... And it keeps hitting its head. The next generation of kids of, of, of fleas that they that they give birth to, if you take them out of the jar, they can only jump as high as the jar. So people are just doing stuff because they're used to doing it because that's their mentality. It's, it's literally a slave-like mentality. Oh, this is the way the system is, so I'm not going to challenge anything. Like I've always thought outside the box since I was a kid. Somebody says some rumor about somebody, I'm like, you know, um... Why do why do we why do we believe that or how do we even know that or or whatever? Um, you know, because I would try and believe the best in somebody and somebody talk bad about somebody. I'm like, oh, they were they were nice to me, so why? But you know, <laughs> nowadays, like my baby's mom and all of her crew of friends who were friends of mine, they just believed whatever she said just because a bunch of women got together and just emotionally followed a narcissistic psycho and her charismatic sister, and they just believed whatever she said. Because people just, they don't want to get out of their comfort zone. They just want to flow downstream with the way everybody else is going. And then you flow, do something, somebody like me flows upstream. Like, look at what a crazy weirdo he is. He's sitting there arguing about his baby's mom's attorney who's imprisoning women clients in his own home and tanking cases. And I look like an idiot for protesting that stuff. You know, I, I once protested a woman who posted a picture of her daughter in underwear um, online. And... The, the court was like, how dare you talk about her like that? And it was a factual, it was a, like, nobody cares about the truth. <sighs> so, in any case, you got to stop. This is why the system is the way that it is. You know, there's a guy on my, you know, my most popular video on my YouTube channel is the, it's called the number one argument for 50-50, which is kind of the same argument for full custody. Like, everybody wants to hear 50-50. But nobody's arguing for 50-50 what I point out in that video. So the latest post on that, this guy says, get a lawyer. Why would some dummy come on my page and say, get a lawyer, when I talk about winning without a lawyer? And everybody hates lawyers. Everybody just says and trusts and believes what the status quo is, and they can't think for themselves. you got to not settle for things like, the judge saying, um, I, I, I think I mentioned it in my last video, a judge not getting the mother found in contempt, or I got guys who the mother took off to another state or took off without the child, and it's not an emergency to them. Everybody will say the emergency courtroom is, or ex parte is only for if the child's bleeding or get beat, get, gets beat up. I've seen women get custody of their kids or get the kids back because they said, oh, the father took the kid to a campsite and there was one guy, a friend of his, drank a beer. I literally saw a woman get an emergency order restraining the dad from a kid and he had to go to the full hearing because that's what she said. Or women go to court and say, the father kept the child from me yesterday and there's no court order or anything and they get an emergency ex parte order. Now, that doesn't harm the guy, but then he's got to wait two weeks. 
until he can get access to the kid that he's used to seeing regularly. I can just hear people right now. Well, you just said, oh, you guys should keep their kid on Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, so? What, you're afraid that she'll go to court and get an order to place in the child with her temporarily on an emergency basis? You guys are such scaredy cats over the littlest petty thing. You shouldn't settle for a judge saying, well, that's not an emergency. The kid's not hurt or in pain. Or, but Yes, they are. They are in pain and suffering from being traumatized, being yanked away from their father and their father not being around. All the science and the data says that children suffer when a father's not in the home full time. And now she's taking the, the, the father out of the children's life immediately. And it's been months now. How come you not, how come, how can you not do something and rescue the child? See, you got, the reason why I come up, like people are like, oh my God, you're a genius or you think of all these things. You know what I'm thinking of? Freaking common sense. If I if my kid is living with me 50% of the time or whatever, I have an agreement with my baby's mom, then all of a sudden she gets a stick up her butt and takes off in another state. That's obviously going to rattle the child and traumatize the child. Some people don't want to move their kids to another state with an intact family or some people or when the kids move, the kids got an adjustment period. So if that's the case, when you have someone abruptly uprooting a child and yanking them away. And then all you guys should know that I present scientific data about children suffering without a father in the home full time. Those of you who actually care about your kids enough to go look at my free resources on my flow page. If the science says children need both parents. And everybody knows if you kidnap a kid from a parent, unless the kidnapper tortures the child, I, I would make an argument. Oh, so if a total stranger kidnaps the kid, you're going to say, well, let's not go after the kidnapper. Your, your honor, you'll say, let's not go after the kidnapper as long as the kid's alive and safe and not being tortured. The child should be where the child should be. It's traumatizing to a child for the family to be broken up, for there to be a divorce and separation. And then when you yank the parent totally out of their life, what if, the, what if you yanked, and I've given this example before. What if you yanked a teddy bear away from a kid that they sleep with at night and they're crying like, I can't get to sleep. And, and then you're like, that's too bad. You need to grow up. And they're only two years old or something like that. And then you keep the teddy bear away. You dangle the teddy bear to make them behave or something like that. Some people would think that would be cruel. Or if your kids are in the house and it's hot and, you know, I get, gave this example recently in a video. If it's hot, sweltering, humid in the summer and all the other kids are playing in a sprinkler out front in the neighborhood and your kid saying, mommy, can I go outside? No, no, no. They, you would think that's cruel. How much more cruel is it to take a child away from a parent and then also just move away from the parent and cut off all contact? The, I would tell a judge, what if the mother just cut food off? Would you say, oh, the kid's still alive? The kid's not diseased yet? You have to unbrainwash these people. The reason you don't try something like what I'm talking about, your lawyer doesn't do it, is because everybody settles for the status quo. If if nobody in the history of mankind, if or if everybody in the history of mankind settled for the status quo, there wouldn't have been any, you know, Mother Teresa's, Martin Luther King's, Malcolm X's, Harriet Tubman's, or any other hero of history. There wouldn't be anybody doing something different and changing stuff or changing the mentality or being a revolutionary or creating an invention. Let's just follow along and do what everybody else does. The system, again, like I said, I think in my last video, you go into, you, before court, you're like, this court is so screwed up. I can't believe I have to go to court to fight for my kids. Then you go in there and you give some fake politically correct speech that has nothing to do with what really is going on. The mother's a psycho. She's holding the child. She's got mental illness. She was suicidal. You don't bring up all that other stuff because it looks bad. So then you're left with no evidence and you're hoping that the court rules in your favor based on nothing. And then you walk out of court and you say, I can't believe how corrupt the court is. You settled for less. You settled for, you settled for, oh, I have to be nice. I can't go in there and aggressively, zealously advocate for myself. Like you see in every movie, you see it on TV, you see attorneys going in there and passionately arguing on the case. And then on your case in family court, for some reason, all of a sudden, somebody says, oh, you can't argue like that. It looks bad or it's aggressive. What? 
See, if you just sat and thought twice about what you're saying, you question stuff, like I tell you, everybody do, like, where do you get that from? Where do you get that idea from? Then you would have a eureka moment and say, that's not the way it should be. And then if you won't, if you don't settle, you will go in there and ask.